Okay, very good morning to everyone. Hope you're well. It's Wednesday, the 11th of September, 2019, live from the desk here at Amplify Trading in London. I'm just having a, a quick recap, firstly, of this calendar, because I think it really does start to encapsulate a little bit of where we are this morning, but also what to expect from the day ahead, and then really what is gearing up for Thursday, which ultimately is one of the biggest days in, in the, the calendar for this week. So if you actually look at Wednesday, uh, today, you don't really have a great deal of information coming out overall. You've got the US PPI numbers. There's absolutely nothing of significance really coming out in terms of Eurozone or UK data. And this is very much a, a wait and see for the big event, which is, of course, the ECB interest rate and accompanying press conference, which we'll get tomorrow. We'll go into that in the briefing much more detail uh, on Thursday morning. But you've also got out of the US the likes of uh, well, let's just run through some of the highlights here. You've got some Chinese data overnight, trade balance. This was tentatively scheduled at the weekend, so we'll see whether that has been confirmed. Eurozone industrial production will be quite important. Um, OPEC meeting commences in Abu Dhabi. This is not one of their semi-annual ones in Vienna. This is one of their more technical-led meetings to make sure that they're adhering to compliance levels. But of course, quite important given the new change of leadership at the oil ministry in Saudi Arabia and interested to see how their relationship uh, appears to be aligned or not with Russia. Um, then you've got the ECB, then you've got US CPI as well, and obviously still a, a key metric as to ascertain then the type of aggressiveness of how dovish or not the Fed are going to be next Wednesday on the, on the 18th. So I think that really kind of sums up the current state of play because just having a look across the charts at the moment, things are relatively quiet. There's not really a great deal of massive breaking news for me to go into two main subjects I'm going to discuss are the resignation of the National Security Advisor John Bolton in the US last night and then also Apple's earnings which came or not earnings excuse me the the new conference that they held to unveil their latest suite of products and how that impacted their stock price and and how we closed on Wall Street so overall uh, European US dot futures I mean US are, are basically flat the DAX is up a touch a little bit of resistance around uh, the R1 on the daily pivot so far, which was also the overnight Asia Pacific high. Uh, currency markets pretty quiet. Both major pairs are basically flat, mimicking the dollar index, uh, and pretty similar in the US 10 year and gold. So, uh, a fairly flat open, I would say, is kind of the description with a lack of real top level macro drivers at the moment as the market perhaps waits for bigger signals to come from the next big central bank decision we'll get from Europe tomorrow. But getting into a couple of headlines to get you up to speed, uh, if you weren't aware already, uh, bringing up the crude chart firstly and, and looking at a dip in price action that we saw yesterday late afternoon, we moved from in WTI crude around 58.75.80 all the way down to around 57.28. So decent over dollar move and a pullback in oil you remember in the briefing yesterday, we were talking about the continuation of the upward moves that we had seen in crude. I mean, just to put it into a little bit of context, since what would be what Friday, we've rallied from uh, below 55 all the way up to nearly 59. So a pretty decent move. And so a, a correction of sorts is probably warranted to just book some profits on those longs. The catalyst certainly coming from the headline that Donald Trump, the US president, has ousted John Bolton after a dispute over negotiating with the Taliban. Now, what Trump was after here was he wanted to invite Taliban officials into Camp David for negotiations about the uh, a truce, if you like, to push forward in Afghanistan uh, in a positive fashion. However, John Bolton was against this. They had a big fallout. And then apparently that has led now to the president firing um, Bolton or Bolton's point of view, him resigning because his position was untenable at that point. Now, interesting thing here, a bit of background. John Bolton is the third casualty of the National Security Advisor role. If you remember, Michael Flynn lasted a couple of weeks before then it got found out that he had had uh, inappropriate dealings with the Russians in the build-up to the US presidential election in 2016. He has now pleaded guilty to withholding information to federal officials uh, and he's currently going through that process in the courts at the moment. You then had McMaster was the next one. 
but again, he lasted about a year, and now John Bolton has come and gone. Now, the one thing about John Bolton to be aware of is that I think this move from Trump to get rid of him was kind of inevitable. If anything, I think Trump, a little bit of perhaps misjudgment, because it, he's been very difficult for Trump to get a lot of domestic wins. Um, I guess the, the corporate tax cut was the one major one he's got under his belt, but he's failed on so many other internal policies. Um, the repeal of Obamacare, the border war, <coughs> the border war, whether from funding to the execution of the actual program, uh, the banning of the uh, movement of certain Islamic states within the borders of North America, <coughs> and so on. The one thing that he, he was or aiming to champion was um, some successes he could have had on the international and the foreign policy scene. And obviously brokering things like the, the original Korean peace deal was, was quite a meaningful one, um, and so on. But the problem that you had with John Bolton is that he is pretty much an uber hawk when it comes to foreign policy. Here's a guy that was a big backer of the Iraq war. He even went as far as saying that Cuba had WMDs before. Um, he is highly critical of North Korea. He is so far down that, that line that I think it was potentially just inevitable that this was going to happen because what Trump needs is someone who is going to appear um, with a tough stance but not follow through with the, the complete and utter conviction that John Bolton would have had on these issues. And hence then there's confrontation because Trump just wants a political win, not actually to go down these routes to the degree I think that, that Mr. Bolton would have, would have wanted. So I guess the, the, the read between the lines here is that for one, Trump said he's going to uh, nominate a replacement next week. Quite a lot of journalists' um, reports I've been reading last night were suggesting that he's going to find it pretty tough to fill that role, given he's already gone through three people in three years and all of the issues that are ongoing with the US at the moment on the foreign policy front. Who's going to want to put their hand up for that role? The other thing is he potentially is going to have um, probably another yes man, a kind of, as the press have quoted, a mini-me, to come in and just basically do the willing or the bidding of, of what the president wants. And, and again, who wants to really take that, take that position? It's going to get filled. We'll see. Uh, the deputy has stepped in uh, in the interim period. Um, but yeah, pull back in oil prices, absolutely, uh, on the fast money move. I mean, if you were agile enough to get hold of some of that, obviously the removal of one of the ardent hawks of foreign policy in the US administration means that there's a lesser likelihood of confrontation with people like Iran, Iraq, just generally on the global front. And so that needs to have some of that risk premium priced out of oil. However, there's of course lots of other things that are driving oil prices at the moment, from the trade war to the OPEC supply agreement, which we'll be looking for an update um, tomorrow. So a little bit of pullback, but not um, a huge amount as I said, a dollar twenty-five, dollar fifty move, and now we've just gravitated towards pivot on the daily level. So I think that story is kind of done and dusted now. I don't, I wouldn't expect it to continue to move the price going forward for the rest of the session. <clears throat> the other news story, of course, that came out last night, um, yesterday evening before the close, and Apple shares were kind of it was warmly received in terms of the announcement where Apple unveiled a new suite of products. Uh, typically, this being their, their regular, where they come out with the new updated iPhone. So we're now on the iPhone 11. They also released a new Series 5 watch. Um, but the thing that people were talking about the most and what really underpinned uh, the rise in their share price was the pricing model, the aggressiveness of um, the device and services pricing. So with the devices, the iPhone 11 um, starts at 699 bucks. That's down from the XR's $750 price that we had last year. They have also released a, a kind of suite of pro models, which are slightly more expensive, the top end going for just over a thousand bucks. But the main staple kind of flagship phone under that uh, number 11 is cheaper. And I think that's a, a good learning lesson 
an adaptation of the strategy from Apple because I really do think that with the iPhone 10 being such a disappointment, a lot of that was to a certain degree a lack of innovation in the phone in itself, also increased competition for an improvement in other models, particularly some of the Chinese firms, but also the price point. It was almost like we had gone, we'd hit and almost gone over that threshold that the consumer was willing to pay for, for an actual um, smartphone. Um, so this, this seems like, like, a, like a good move from them. The market seemed to have agreed. The iPhone 8 from 2017 now costs just 450 bucks. That's had another $150 price cut. Um, and the other thing here, of course, is about the diversification of their revenue streams. As we know, if we cycle through a couple of these graphics, uh, this is a look at their market share over the period um, of the last five years. And as you can see, their market share tends to kind of spike whenever they unveil the new series of the phone and then it falls off, uh, of course. And you can see we've come back down to the lowest point that we've been in many years at the moment. And that's because, as I said, their market share is being whittled down by continuous improvements of their rivals. I actually think from a, a technology point of view, there's not actually a great deal that the iPhone does better than the other phones, but that's not really why people um, buy an iPhone. People buy an iPhone typically because of the not only the operating system and its simplicity, but also because it's, it's viewed as a premium product. So what's quite interesting here is that by offering these more now low-cost competitive models, are now Apple looking to gobble up some of that market, or is this just uh, purely to try and maintain some of its market share? The other thing, of course, this, this graphic is quite interesting. This is because Apple last night, Tim Cook unveiled a $4.99 monthly cost of Apple's upcoming TV Plus video streaming service. Now that does undercut the likes of uh, Netflix, of Disney, as Amazon Prime. And so this as well is, is being seen as quite a strong move. <coughs> Obviously Apple being more new to the space, but coming in with some real firepower potentially with the amount of capital they could throw at this service. And they definitely, in this quest to diversify away from that singularity, from focus on the phone in terms of a revenue generator, this will be key for that model in, into pushing into the service sector. And as you can see here, this is looking in the white line, is Netflix daily percentage change on the session. And they fell over 3% in yesterday's session. Disney were down over 2%. Uh, and remember, Apple were, shares were moving in the opposite direction as this was coming out. So looking to really spice things up in that live streaming uh, and TV subscription model space. Um, so yeah, that was, that was Apple. Has that translated into much for the overall charts and sentiment? Not really. Um, I would say comparative to years gone by, um, their products are hardly setting the world on fire these days. And they haven't done for a number of years. But again, I think what's very interesting here is that really Apple are shaking things up with their pricing strategy, which, which I think is the beginning of uh, potentially something that will, will be continued out of necessity, not out of choice, uh, if anything, over the long term, but should be a benefit to the firm overall. Final thing from a news perspective to talk about is we had the API oil inventories last night. This, of course, is the prelude to the, the DOE numbers we'll get this afternoon. And as you can see here, we had a very large drawdown, way larger than expected in the headline crude figure, drawdown of seven and a quarter million. Expectations were, <coughs> excuse me, for a drawdown of just 2.8 million. So again, when we talk about the price of oil, we had that pullback on the, the resignation of John Bolton, but then we've had a recovery and you can see where the recovery came. So if there was kind of two phases to this move led by the fundamental um, catalysts, the downside move on the, on the John Bolton news and then the rally came, which was really this move here, where we've now gone into this range bound price action, um, which came after the numbers last night from the API. Cushing was a draw of 1.4 million, a little bit deeper than expected, helping that narrative. Gasoline likewise was a draw of 4.5 million, the largest drawdown we've had since April of this year. And Distillates was a build of 600,000, so definitely on the balance more bullish support for crude prices. 
As mentioned with the calendar, finally, it's very quiet this morning. There's not really a great deal going on. Certainly out of UK and Europe, there's absolutely nothing happening. Uh, later on in the afternoon, you get the PPIs as the kind of lead up into the US CPI, which we'll get tomorrow. All infantry data at 3.30. Um, and that's about it. So unless you're trading fixed income, futures where you've got the 10-year auction, um, which will be then followed by the 30-year from the US, having had the three-year note auction yesterday. Um, otherwise, that's it for the moment. Okay, let me hand you over to Sam. I wish you a good day ahead. Uh, I'll let him go over some of the setups that he's looking at from a technical perspective. Thanks very much. Hi, right, guys. Yeah, good morning. Uh, we'll have a, a quick look over some of the, the currency pairs uh, to start off with. We'll bring in the, the pound to to the picture here and uh, just having a look. Let me put this on a, a 60 minute and, and having a, a start with the, the trend line from the uh, the low that we had, of course, on the, uh, the 3rd of September, that multi year low. Let's bring this in and just having a, a look at this this trend line that has broken uh, ye early hours this morning. You know, so you've got those, those free real tests, the 3rd, uh, the 9th, and the 10th. So the break of that. And, and also you can just see this morning, we we'll put this onto 15 minutes, just how well it's been respected uh, on the retest of that level. So we, we already know that people are looking at this, this uh, trend line. So if we were to push to the upside, obviously keep an eye on that, really starting on the, the 3rd of September uh, coming through there. Last few sessions, you know, despite that, that trend line break have been relatively range bound. If we just put a, a rectangle in, in that price action from the from the high of the ninth, uh, it's obviously the low yesterday. Yeah, you can see they're sort of marking up R1 and just below the S1 from today's session. Um, so worth having uh, that on. Uh, but I think the the main point here to make is that that trend line really respected quite well. Just below where we're trading, obviously a, a key support area from uh, since really midday yesterday. You can see we've already had one, two, three, perhaps looking for that fourth test of that, around 123.42 on the futures. So that could be an area where if that was to break, we get that drift lower. Uh, if it's to hold, we might get uh, another test of that trend line, which has been you know, knocking once, twice, three times already uh, to see what happens. Uh, again, would be quite interesting. Uh, so those would be the, the level, certainly shorter term, I'd be focusing on for the pound euro. Um, if I just put this back onto uh, a 60 minute, you can just see how, and just make it a bit smaller, you can see we're really getting squeezed here in, in the euro over the last couple of days. That spike we had on the 5th to the upside, and then from the 9th, you can see just how well uh, this has been squeezed from both directions. And we're actually literally just uh, testing that lower part now. Uh, so worth keeping an eye on uh, there. Obviously, as we were saying yesterday, 24 hours ago, how it's not too surprising to be contained within this ahead of the ECB, uh, of course. Um, but worth keeping in eye what happens really now. Uh, actually, the dollar just trying to break out its its range of the uh, the last few hours, uh, and obviously keep an eye what happens here. If it closes the half hour below. 8.30, you might get a, a further push down, but you can already see a couple of times it's attempted to, to break through with, with not much luck. Uh, but you can see here, Euro getting squeezed really from both directions and uh, ahead of the ECB, no harm in sort of staying uh, out of that unless we were to get uh, a big push, a uh, big push. Aussie dollar, um, interesting, uh, I guess, here, and I'm just going to take the, the pivots off. Um, obviously helped by the fact the the China US situ situation has uh, has got better and uh, I, I, th I think there could be a decent short coming here for, for the Aussie the high that we had yesterday uh, not too far away from what was has been a, a pretty key level uh, in previous trade if we just mark up these lows here from uh, the 21st of June and the 9th 10th of, of July before we had that breakdown to the back end just before August uh, I would be interested to see what happens around there as well. So 69.21 on the on the futures. Yeah, we're still 50 ticks away, uh, but that would be certainly an area I'd be quite interested in to, to look for at medium term uh, short. Uh, we did spike higher yesterday uh, and then just found a bit of resistance. You have another area of interest, I guess, at 68.92. 
Um, but Aussie Dollar certainly on my radar to look for uh, a move to the downside again after being on such a, a strong run. Uh, the yen moving over just to wrap up the, the currencies. You can see here the oh, well, just the, the low that we made yesterday. You've got another key area just below there that you'd be aware of. And then also these these highs from the 28th and, and 30th before we, we broke through on the 1st of August. Uh, and then even looking, if I put these the pivots back on for today, you can just see what's happened each time. We kind of break through an, a low. We come back, retest. And again, we made this low here. We come back, we retest. Uh, we then broke through this low and we haven't quite come back, I guess, to properly retest it uh, like these uh, previous goes at doing so. So we're keeping a, a watch on what happens around that area, just below the pivot today. And well, basically what was the low you want to be looking at, the, the low of yesterday morning. Uh, Asian session so I'd, ha I'd have that marked up just the way this this uh, pair has been moving uh, looks to act as a, a pretty good resistance into the afternoon session uh, as well S&P yesterday post cash open we we got a, a brief uh, move lower uh, before the recovery into the back end of the session and here looking again at the, the 240 you can see unless we really get a, a retest of that 2950 area uh, it seems a bit no man's land between this and, and 3,000, which you can see obviously being the, the round number, but also uh, an area we broke down on uh, the, the last couple of days of July. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see what, of course, happens on uh, a test of either 3,000 or 29.45, 29.50. But at the moment, it seems just a bit choppy, a bit range bound uh, in those areas. Uh, you can see S2 providing quite good support and obviously helped by Apple. Uh, you know, into the close, that market did drift higher. Uh, for me personally, I'd be, you know, waiting to see what happens for a bigger move uh, around 3,029.45. Just maybe more intraday, you can see we're just getting a test of the, the third, or the third test of this trend line from yesterday's low. So from an intraday perspective, sure, it's worth keeping uh, an eye on. And today's R1 matching up at the, the high of the month uh, as well. So you've got a couple of obviously key points to, to have marked up more intraday, uh, but the, the main move I'd expect 29.45 or 3,000 uh, to, to ignite things. Gold, 1,500 uh, trading uh, at the moment, just a touch below a couple of uh, cent. Obviously after, after its big move has, has uh, come down a, a fair bit, the high on the futures up at 15.66. Haven't quite made that spike lower that we had on the, on the 13th, so that's an area to, to keep an eye on. Uh, this, this drift lower, uh, you can see as well, probably similar to that S&P and the, the trend line from those lows. We're just testing it now. Of course, you want to see what happens here on uh, whether we get confirmed uh, the third test or not. But uh, certainly the way gold can move, just like it did the uh, previous or a couple of previous sessions ago, on the break of those trends, uh, worth keeping an eye <clears throat> what happens around that area. Uh, I think for gold and, and certainly silver, there's better markets to focus on for now. It does seem pretty, you know, it's just consolidating after that move lower uh, and relatively choppy. Uh, I'll be, you know, waiting for these little patterns to, to take place. And you can see again last night, this is more eight o'clock, helped by obviously stocks going higher. But this is when you get those real nice moves, clean moves on, on the breaks of these patterns and that would be probably how I'd be looking to, to trade gold uh, later on. Oil, DOE coming out later, API, you can see a decent enough move towards that pivot which has acted as pretty strong resistance and 58 bucks which has been a key level uh, over the last, uh, well I guess you could say since the time we're talking here, 10.30, so it's not far off 24 hours, that's a, a key level you just be a bit careful above the pivot because you do have a, a breakdown area eight cent above so more of a zone 50 and well the pivot to 5808 and then to the downside you could argue uh, this little range could be expected to hold in the morning 30 cent from 95 to 5765 um daily chart for for oil you can see you know we we're talking yesterday how it's kind of broken out of that uh that trend line from those highs. Let me just put the trend on. 
just bring this in. Uh, so we got that confirmed break. You didn't quite get the retest yesterday, but even though it was slightly choppy on, on the 5th of September, still something I would have marked up uh, as well. We did yesterday as well, of course, get a, a decent enough test on that 31st of July high. So yes, the, uh, the fundamental reason oil came down was you know, to, to do with Bolton, but uh, also really strong technical resistance up at that 31st of July. Uh, and we're perhaps now just waiting to see what happens between those two levels. Retest of the trend line uh, and up at that 31st high as well. Any questions, obviously, please do uh, let us know. The DAX is trading on the high at the moment, so worth keeping an eye on the euro attempting to break out of that uh, bottom trend line uh, and oil coming down a touch from what has been a, a key resistance for the last part of the session. Any questions, please do uh, let us know. But I hope you all have uh, uh, a good trading day.